If you want a cute outfit that doesn't break the bank for any event, there are a few places that have become the most popular shops in America for you to turn to. You could open up Shein, Timu, Boohoo, or Fashion Nova to shop for the most perfect of looks. And well, I've done an episode on three of those, so Fashion Nova, I guess it's your turn to step into the corporate casket. It's actually pretty easy to see why this fast fashion brand got so big so fast. It offers adorable clothes that are incredibly size inclusive, and hey, even celebrities were choosing to shop there to save some cash, not that they really needed to, but you get the point. Cardi B, for example, has been repping Fashion Nova from the very beginning. With that new Fashion Nova runway collection, what's poppin', y'all? How you do the Givenchy with the Fashion Nova runway collection? She wears it so much that some people have even asked if she owns the company. And for the record, she doesn't, though she has collaborated with them for her very own fashion line. Instead, Fashion Nova is actually owned by Richard Sagian, a man who grew up in retail and fashion. His idea with Fashion Nova had one main objective, take the fast fashion industry and make it even faster. Soon, Fashion Nova was churning out pieces at the speed of light, and by 2018, they were the most Googled fashion site. They beat out giants like Louis Vuitton, Versace, and Gucci. But despite massive successes and near constant presence on Instagram and even on the red carpet, everything isn't quite as wonderful as everyone has made it seem. Yes, I will give credit where credit is due. They do some things wonderfully, like offering cute and trendy and wearable clothing for all sizes. If other retailers who aren't massive fast fashion companies would do that, it would be great because all too often, whenever a brand is size inclusive, that brand is also usually a hot mess. And Fashion Nova is unfortunately no different. When clothes have to be pushed out at a rapid pace, it usually means that the people behind them are also being pushed. Unfortunately, the people employed by Fashion Nova weren't really being thanked for their efforts or paid for that matter. But then again, giving credit doesn't seem to be in Fashion Nova's wheelhouse because they also have been accused multiple times of stealing from designers. So what can I say? It's literally like you've seen one fast fashion company, you've seen them all, and Fashion Nova is no different. So what's behind all of those celebrity endorsements and brightly colored outfits? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. I'm the Illuminati, and this is The Corporate Casket. There is one substantial way that Fashion Nova stands out from their competitors like Shein or Timu. Instead of all their clothing being manufactured and shipped out from China, though some of it is, the bulk of it is actually made right here in the good old USA. Now, part of you might be thinking, hey, that's awesome, give us our jobs, but don't get too excited too fast here. A sweatshop is still a sweatshop no matter where it is. And the factories in charge of producing clothing for Fashion Nova, well, they are about as sweatshop-like as you can get. Now, even though they're based in the US and I get it that there's like this new wave kind of phrasing around a sweatshop being literally not in the US, but just because it's illegal doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So just little reminder there. Based primarily in Los Angeles, Fashion Nova depends on factories that are notorious for paying their workers off the books at every opportunity. And that's if they even pay them at all. In 2016, the US Department of Labor found that Fashion Nova and its handful of factories in one of the most expensive cities in the world owed roughly $3.8 million in back wages to their factory workers. In some of those factories, some people were being paid as little as $2.77 an hour to sew clothing. And in case you're wondering, this is a city where the minimum wage was roughly $10 an hour back in 2016, and the average rent for a one bedroom apartment was also over $2,000. So $2.77, that certainly wasn't gonna cut it for anybody. There is no possibility that anyone could survive on that, and it certainly wouldn't be possible to support a family. Even back in 2016, when the economy was relatively normal, there is no fucking way anyone pays rent, eats, drives a car, or anything with that wage. Frankly, it's disgusting. And just very, very small tangent because of course I have to. Uh, I used to live in Los Angeles and for people that are like, oh my God, you know, poor people don't need cars. First of all, yes, people have the right to get where they need to go. And because we don't have the infrastructure for actual buses, trams, subways, whatever, we're stuck in a car society. But Los Angeles in particular is extremely like car dependent. If you do not have a car, like 
good luck getting anywhere, doing anything, accomplishing anything, just surviving. So yes, you absolutely need a car, but especially in Los Angeles. And again, $2.77, that's not paying for anything. Now, obviously when it comes to these wage discrepancies and issues, Fashion Nova did not want to take responsibility for any of it. Instead, after multiple violations had been found at their factories, they released this statement. Any suggestion that Fashion Nova is responsible for underpaying anyone working on our brand is categorically false. Now, I'm relatively sure that the factories with Fashion Nova worked pretty much the same way the ones that Shein did. They don't necessarily own them, they just contract them out. But still, you are responsible for the workers being paid under the name of your company. It doesn't matter if they're working in a contracted factory, it's still your responsibility to make sure that your people are paid. Clearly, people weren't being paid anywhere close to what they deserve to be. Just, you know, take some responsibility, fix the issue. It's literally as simple as that, but of course it's just an opinion and obviously that's not really what happened either. Miss Cortez, a 56 year old woman who spoke to the New York Times about working at Fashion Nova told them all about her experience. According to her, the pay wasn't even based on an hourly wage, but instead it varied upon just how much she could actually sew. For each shirt, she made four cents for the sleeves, five cents for the side seams and eight cents for the neckline. For those of you who don't feel like running some quick math in your head, don't worry, I got you. So for a shirt, she allegedly was being paid about 26 cents. Now in total, she said she averaged about $270 a week, which is about $4.66 an hour. Just think how many damn shirts she had to have sewn to make that. Fingers were probably bleeding or worn down to the damn nubs and she was literally being paid pennies for all of that work. However, the pay was not the only problem when it came to factories. The conditions there were also pretty damn terrible because there can never just be one thing wrong, can there? Ms. Cortez also revealed that the factories themselves were absolutely filthy. She said, quote, there were cockroaches, there were rats, the conditions weren't good. So she's being paid pennies in a factory full of rats to sew clothing that's being sold to a company that back in 2017 saw their sales grow by 600%. Not to mention the fact that they also were the most Googled fashion brand on earth. Just, I don't know, everything about that cumulatively doesn't sit right with me. And again, while brands are not technically responsible for what's going on in factories when they're doing this contracting thing, they should at least know that the people making their clothing were suffering and being like, huh, at minimum, like publicity wise, this would be bad if this ever got out, but that was not the care here. And I'm trying to use that as an excuse. It really should be, hey, you should give a fuck about the people working to make your brand literally as successful as it is. But I'm literally going the bare minimum here. Like think about the bad PR and the backlash. Like if you don't wanna care about the human aspect of it, think about your bottom line. But again, I don't think any of that truly matters here. Especially since the Department of Labor announced that Fashion Nova's labels were found most frequently by the investigators looking into factories paying egregiously low wages. At some point, it should be easy math to figure out that your production costs are just a little too good to be true. You shouldn't need the feds knocking at your door to tell you what the hell is going on. But again, that's just an opinion. I get wanting to give people nice clothing for a cheap price, or I mean, I don't know, decent clothing, trendy clothing, whatever, but that shouldn't be at workers' expense. Just find another way to do it or don't do it at all. Why is that such a difficult concept? If you can't afford to pay your folks a living wage, you're not doing business right. And just as a casual reminder, because I know I'm gonna hear a few people humming and hoffing about but my capitalism. Just remember that when a worker can't actually make a living wage, that wage that's missing has to be subsidized by the government through food stamps, through housing programs, through various allotments and things like that. And do you know where that comes from? That's right, axes. So while big wigs, CEOs, whatever, will rake in millions of dollars and get bonuses for like these big profits and stuff like that, we, the taxpayers, are the one who are really stuck footing the bill while they're just raking in massive growth. So just think about that. Just remember that literally forever. Anyway, now, unfortunately, abysmal pay and horrid working conditions are not the only things that seem to go hand in hand with the fast fashion industry. For many of them, being at the forefront of fashion trends is a very high priority. Obviously, this means that they have to push out new styles and new clothing as fast as physically possible. And well, someone has got to design all of those and sometimes those designers are never made aware that their art would be appearing in a Fashion Nova near you. Instead, their designs are simply ripped out from under their noses and sold to the masses.
It's almost any designer's dream to have their work available to the public. Walking down the street and seeing something you imagined in your head, that's a fairy tale. But for that dream to be truly accomplished, people need to pay you for your designs. Otherwise, it's more of a nightmare. Well, over the years, many designers have reportedly faced that very same nightmare and it came at the hands of Fashion Nova. And it's not just one or two people either, it's a whole group of folks. One designer, Destiny Blue, was shocked when she found that the major fashion retailer had ripped off her designs. Now, she had spent years growing her brand and painstakingly adding crystals to leggings by herself by hand to create her midnight sky tights. Her designs got so popular that they have been worn by the likes of Beyonce, Kylie Jenner, and Mariah Carey. And then suddenly and without warning, she noticed that those very same leggings or something that looked very similar to them were appearing somewhere else, the Fashion Nova website. Not only were they selling her leggings, but they also took a picture of Kylie Jenner wearing her leggings, plastered them all over their website, and then sold the cheaper version of them. After the whole ordeal, Destiny wrote on Twitter, quote, Fashion Nova knocked off my tights as soon as Kylie wore them, plus used her pics featuring my brand to sell a copy. It's false advertising. I'm positive they made more than me, plus never lifted a finger. They could have never had the product if it weren't for my idea. And just, can you imagine? Like you have the drive, ambition, and artistic skill and business prowess as well to not only create beautiful designs, but have them sold and be worn by massive stars. Just to have those same designs ripped off by a company that's worth billions of dollars. They could have asked for a collab. They could have paid her for her input, but no, apparently too much work, wasn't worth their time, whatever. Now, another designer named Lucy Wilden found herself also in a similar situation in 2019 after she found that Fashion Nova had been selling a knockoff version of her crochet dress. Now, you may or may not know, but crocheting items takes an extremely long amount of time and it's a lot of effort to produce too. So when Lucy found that Fashion Nova had been selling one of her gorgeous pieces for only $40, she was not only shocked that they had undoubtedly taken her design and like, seriously, they're nearly identical, but that they had also paid someone almost nothing to be able to do it. By her calculations, the $40 retail price would make the production price roughly $13. With a dress like this, that would mean whoever made it was probably paid roughly $1 an hour to produce the design. As she said, quote, not only are they stealing my design, but they're using it to exploit people and profit from it, which is the opposite of what Knots and Vibes stands for. Her work, according to her, takes about 10 hours to make by hand. She's self-taught and has been in multiple magazines, including Hunger, Clash, and Notion. Over the years, she has purposely stalled the growth of her business because she refused to pay people an unfair wage to produce her clothing. But here comes Fashion Nova doing exactly that, selling her gorgeous designs for next to nothing and going against everything she believes in to make a buck. When she reached out for some clarification from the brand, she got a pretty useless email that simply told her that different vendors all over the world make their outfits and that they sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. So just to be clear here, someone who has proof that your designs are just remarkably similar to theirs emails you and that's all you have to say. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's also just a bit infuriating that they signed it with like a little heart. Like, sorry, your design was stolen, boss babe. Love ya, mwah. Like what? In fact, just last year, they were accused of stealing from yet another designer named Anifa, who is the founder and creative director of the brand Hanifa. Her incredible hand-knit gown was copied down to the pattern colors, and she took to Twitter to call out Fashion Nova. She was met with outcries of support, but no word from the massive company. And just over and over and over and over again, Fashion Nova has been accused of stealing from designers, and more often than not, it's actually black designers who are the victims of theft. In an industry where black designers make up only 7.3% and white designers make up an outlandish 63%, it's kind of a big slap in the face that Fashion Nova seems to strategically target the people who have the hardest time making it. And I'm pretty sure it isn't an accident either. Smaller designers are far less likely to have the resources to actually fight back. Sure, they can turn to social media and hope that an outpouring of support comes their way to help with their cause, but as far as legal recourse, Those are pretty limited, not to mention pretty expensive. Like when was the last time you tried to take on a billion dollar company? It's a lot easier said than done. In 2018, a Los Angeles fashion company called Riot Society did in fact file a lawsuit against Fashion Nova for copyright infringement, but I haven't actually been able to find out if it's been settled or any other updates around that. Regardless, if you need designs, ask. People would probably be perfectly okay with a collaboration. And the worst thing they can say is no. Stealing designs is heartless, disrespectful, and tasteless. 
Stealing from people that have a limited ability to fight back is kind of cowardly. Maybe they could get thousands of people on social media to negatively review the piece to death. Like that could be an option, except, oh, Fashion Nova apparently doesn't allow bad reviews. I forgot that little detail. What's like one of the first things people do when they're shopping online? Check their bank account. Okay, well, I mean, that's probably like the first thing, making sure you actually have money to buy the thing you want. But one of the other things is likely to read reviews about what you're trying to buy. We all want to see if someone has posted a picture of them wearing the item that we want to buy or find out if that dress we see online will show up so small that it would make a cute dress for your cat instead. Reviews are a fantastic way to learn about what's going on in a business. And with fashion online, it's a great way to learn about the quality of the product, the fit and their sustainability. That's if all the reviews are there, that is. A couple of years ago, the Federal Trade Commission filed a complaint against Fashion Nova regarding their review practices. Like any fashion site known to mankind, they offer a write a review button at the bottom of all of their products. Sometimes they would even email people after their purchase to ask if they would please write a review about it. But apparently all reviews are not held with the same esteem. Fashion Nova uses a third party product manager to manage those reviews. One that let users decide which ones were posted automatically and which ones needed client approval. Do you see where I'm going with this? According to the FTC, from 2015 to 2019, Fashion Nova was posting all five-star and four-star reviews automatically, but they left out hundreds of thousands of lower-starred reviews. So basically, if someone had a bad experience, someone else shopping would never know. You would never know if the clothing didn't fit the way they described, if the fabric pulled, or if it looked nothing like the picture. Scrolling through the reviews, you would simply see all of the ones absolutely raving about the product. So obviously more people would be inclined to buy it. According to the FTC, this meant that the company had participated in deceptive acts or practices. Turns out not posting negative comments can wind up costing your company a lot of money. In 2022, it was announced that Fashion Nova had reached a settlement with the FTC to pay $4.2 million for harm consumers incurred. They have also been instructed to post all reviews to their site unless they are explicit, racist, or unlawful and are barred from making misrepresentations in the future. In fact, this is one of the first times that the FTC has gone after a company for concealing negative reviews, though they have gone after other companies for posting fake reviews online. Still, maybe this will make people think twice about suppressing the truth about their products. Though if we're being honest here, I seriously doubt that it's true. Fashion Nova is a billion dollar company. They didn't admit to doing anything wrong and merely said they were highly confident that they could have won in court and simply settled to avoid the distraction and legal fees that would incur during litigation or, you know, whatever. Just blah, blah, blah. We totally could have won this boss babes, but you know, we just chose not to do it. Like, okay. I'm just wondering, like, is there some sort of settlement template that's sent out to all billion dollar companies to respond to lawsuits and complaints? I just feel like I've been reading that same sentence like over and over and over again throughout many of these episodes. Like, is there just like a universal template or does everyone just go, no, we're all totally confident we could have won, but we just didn't want to do it. Not that like we would have lost or anything. Like, is that a standard form, is it? Either way though, Fashion Nova took no accountability and instead blamed the issue on the vendor they were using. The $4.2 million fine will barely put a dent in their profits. And I wouldn't be shocked in the slightest if we actually saw a similar complaint come out about any of the other fast fashion online retailers in the future. Again, that's just my opinion though. Regardless, it doesn't seem like settling the lawsuit made this issue disappear altogether for the fast fashion giant. Just months after they settled, there were two new lawsuits, one in New Jersey and one in Michigan and they were filed against Fashion Nova for their misleading reviews that alleged that they were attempting to artificially inflate the prices of its products. In the lawsuits, they point out that consumers will not even consider a product unless it has a minimum rating of 3.4 stars. And when's the last time you looked at something with maybe two stars and decided you were just gonna risk it? Never, maybe once if you really needed it. Reviews do make a difference. That's kind of the point here I'm trying to make. And for now, these lawsuits are currently pending and looking to achieve class action status. So we're just gonna have to watch and see what happens with those. Meanwhile, and of course, this isn't the only controversy that Fashion Nova has faced in regard to how they treat their customers. Just two years before ReviewGate, there was an issue with their refunds. In 2020, they had to cough up $9.3 million after the FTC accused them of failing to notify consumers that they could cancel orders when they failed to ship them and illegally used gift cards as refunds instead of actually giving people their money back. Andrew Smith, the director of the Consumer Protection Bureau of the FTC said, 
The same rules that we have enforced for nearly 50 years against catalogers and other mail order companies also apply to online sellers. Online retailers need to know that our mail order rule requires them to notify customers in the event of shipping delays and offer the right to cancel with a full refund, not just a gift card or a store credit. And I just love the little bit of sass at the end of the statement, but this is a rule that has been in place for like five decades. So Fashion Nova should have known better. And interestingly enough, in this settlement, when they had to pay over $6 million in refunds, I was actually one of those people because yes, I know I'm not perfect. Please don't ever put anybody with any kind of platform on a pedestal. Don't do it. We're all human. We all make stupid mistakes, myself included. So yeah, I admit I've totally used to buy from Fashion Nova. And I was one of those people that I got randomly an email that was like, oh, would you like $7 from this settlement? I had no idea like what the hell it was over, but I was like, uh, sure, I'll take $7. So I got $7 out of this apparent like $9 million settlement. So, okay, I guess. Now, anyway, as for addressing the settlement, Fashion Nova was instructed to pay over $6 million in refunds. And of course they blamed this issue on their exponential growth that taxed their warehouse and IT system and claimed that it has since been fixed. Fashion Nova seems to have had quite a few issues over the years, but it all comes with the territory of being in fast fashion, right? We can't call them out on all these things without calling out the industry as a whole, and they decided to be a part of that too, right? So they're contributing to that issue. Well, before we continue on to talk about the fast fashion industry as a whole, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's very special sponsor. From the gas pump to the grocery store, to your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is absolutely everywhere. Like seriously, please stop. Thankfully, there's a company out there that's giving you a much needed break, Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton of money. Their phone plans start at just 15 bucks a month. And right now, we all need those savings more than ever. I recently walked in the grocery store the other day for a couple of essentials, milk, eggs, you know, the drill, and it ended up costing me like $30 for just a handful of things. And I'm like, why, why is this happening? Budgets are getting tighter and tighter, I swear to God. The point is though, things have gotten ridiculously expensive and people are cutting corners any way they can to meet ends meet. So don't pay 80 or $90 on your phone bill when you can just pay $15 a month at Mint Mobile. And I know, I know you're probably thinking, yeah, sure, Blair, Mint Mobile always says that, but there's probably a catch. Well, maybe you haven't signed up yet because you think the service won't be as good. Maybe you think there's a bunch of hidden fees or that it's too much of a hassle to switch, right? Well, think again, because that isn't the case. All of Mint Mobile's plans give you unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G network. I've been using them now for over two and a half-ish years, and I can personally vouch that I don't deal with dropped calls or my text not going through, none of that. Despite paying about six times as much with my old carrier, my service with Mint Mobile is as good, if not better than my old plan. And as for hidden fees, those are a thing of the past too. When I say that Mint Mobile starts at just 15 bucks a month, I mean it. That's 15 bucks a month for unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data. There's no hidden fees, no catch, no sneaky shenanigans here. We love a transparent company. And lastly, it's not hard to switch either because you can get your plan shipped to you. And if you do have questions, then Mint Mobile's very friendly customer service team is there to help. So what are you waiting for? Would you rather spend your money on that summer vacation that you've been maybe trying to plan or even just a day off instead of a pricey phone bill every month? I probably think that would be the case. Or maybe just worry less about the stupidly high cost of eggs and make your breakfast in peace. Save money with Mint Mobile. They start at just 15 bucks a month for fabulous service and they're hassle and fee free. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Casper. That's mintmobile.com slash Casper. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Casper. When Richard Seguian first developed the idea for Fashion Nova, he had a goal to take fast fashion and make it even faster. To him, this was doing the world, especially women in the world, a massive favor. As he told Women's Wear Daily back in 2018, it's important to have a lot of styles because our customers post so much online and need new clothes. We don't want girls showing up to the club in the same outfit. We need 50 different denim jackets, not just one. And in a way, he certainly does have a point. Social media has played a major role in the rise of fast fashion. Trends are rapidly changing and what may be deemed cute and in trend one day may be completely obsolete the next. 
Every day we are bombarded with influencers doing their infamous fashion hauls and people determined to just keep up with each other. So for stores to keep up with the ever moving trends, they need to be producing new clothing at the same speed. And for places like Shein, this means producing thousands of new items every single day. For Fashion Nova, this means producing roughly 600 to 900 new items every single week. So yes, truthfully, they are producing slower than Shein, but they are still producing new clothing at a speed that clearly has an impact on their workers and the designers who they are continuously being accused of stealing from. If you're looking for sustainability, quality, or just ethics in general when you shop, Fashion Nova doesn't seem like the ideal place to turn. And just to add the obligatory statement here, yes, I do understand why fast fashion exists. In many cases, it's unfortunately the only way for plus size folks to shop for cute, fashionable clothing that isn't essentially like a muumuu or just like a brown burlap bag for lack of any just subtlety. This problem is not a problem for consumers to handle. It's a problem for the industry to handle and they don't really seem interested in that. If other places could develop size inclusive clothing, that is actually something that people would want to wear, not just, you know, frumpy out of style clothing that we've been subjected to for decades, then I think this whole issue would slowly disappear. But until that happens, folks are going to continue shopping fast fashion and they're fully aware of that and they're capitalizing on it. Still, it comes with consequences to both the people making the clothing and to the environment. And that's something we can't just casually ignore. None of Fashion Nova's supply chain is certified by labor standards, and it received a zero to 10% rating from the 2021 Fashion Transparency Index. Fashion Nova doesn't publish any information about its environmental policies, and while some of its clothing does use sustainable materials like organic cotton, hemp, linen, and other recycled materials, an overwhelming amount of it is using cheap petroleum-based fabrics like polyester, nylon, and acrylic. Additionally, they aren't particularly forthcoming about their greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption levels, or chemical releases. So their environmental impact seems to be just one gigantic question mark. And if there's anything I know about when someone won't say shit about shit, it's probably not good. Sure, the company has done some great things. They have launched charitable initiatives that give back to the community. They have partnered with stars to raise money to put towards women empowerment businesses and charities. But all of those wonderful efforts kind of comes with like a gigantic question mark when it comes off the back of unpaid workers, stolen art from designers and review tampering. So I can't quite give them a trophy for their philanthropy. All in all, fast fashion is going to inherently come with some atrocious side effects, regardless of the company. It will always come with drawbacks and there will always be something to talk about within this industry. So keep your eye out because unfortunately there's more to come. And with all of that being said, that's where we're going to end today's very special Saturday episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date with all the latest updates. I really do appreciate you joining me here to the end of today's episode. And if you'd like to connect with me outside of these episodes, feel free to click my link tree in the description box. It's gonna get you to all of my social media links and other projects I'm involved in. Thank you so much. Also a very big shout out to all the patrons over at patreon.com slash Illuminati for all of your amazing support and suggestions and I'll see everyone in the next one. Bye.